Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is day five of the DIY Dollar Tree Impossibly Easy Christmas Week. Um, this is the Santa mailbox. I've been wanting to make this for over a year. <laughs> if you follow my channel, you'll know we got this cardboard mailbox. We're going to use a piece of box art. And then these poles came from the 4th of July solar lights that I made last year in a DIY. And we're also going to use a... Um, the felt from a tree skirt from the Dollar Tree from this year. But this is optional. I just liked the little snowflake on it and I bought that because the red trucks and all that thing. So. so I just wanted to show you that the solar peg comes with a little stake that goes in the ground and don't throw that out because I'm going to use that. Um, basically unwrap your piece of box art. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to save myself some painting time and I'm just going to cover uh, a piece of paper and I'll show you why um, we're going to just open up this uh, tree skirt it is a super thin felt now honestly if I was using it as a tree skirt it wouldn't make a difference like what does this tree skirt for anyway that does make the bottom of the tree look pretty right but now that we're going to use this fabric to cover a box with a pretty picture on it <laughs> it will make a difference now normally I may just like edit out this part where you're taking the packaging off, but I thought I would leave it in to show you that there's two pretty heavy duty staples in this tree skirt. Um, I knew that if I had just pulled them out, I would have created a huge hole. So if you buy this as a tree skirt or if you need the fabric for something, be very careful the way you take those staples out, okay? Now as you can see here with it just uh, laid over the um, the box you can see the print right through it um, without even trying <laughs> um, I wanted the snowflakes on there um, there is plenty of red trucks still on there to use for the DIYs but I love that snowflake it just it mimicked the snowflake um, on the actual mailbox now at first I was like well if I just use two layers of the fabric that would be better but I thought better of it I just didn't want to waste all the trucks basically so I just found a piece of white computer paper. Actually, this is poster board. I take that back. This is a scrap of poster board from when we made our triangle trees. Um, and I just laid it down on um, the box down on it and cut it out. I wasn't worried about it like, oh, it's perfectly square in corners because the rest of the box is actually a light color. So it wouldn't have made a difference. It's just wherever the wherever there's contrast then that's will, what will show up through the fabric. And what I mean by that is wherever there's two different color variations, like major color variations, that will show up as, um, you know, as differences. And they'll show up on your eye as, um, through the fabric. So what I just wanted to make sure that they had a piece of paper that was big enough that covered the main area. Um, just threw a little bit of hot glue down on it and didn't make a big deal about it. Now I will tell you that this was the um, first project of the night. Well actually it was the second project of the night and I burnt my finger pretty good with the hot glue. Um, I still had the hot glue on high from a previous project and didn't really remember to lower it. So I want to just give you, this is like a PSA portion. <laughs> Please be mindful that your glue temperature is on the right temperature. Okay, so once the white is covered the box, I've laid it down the way I wanted it. What I did was I made sure it was centered. I found it where I wanted to lay the edge. I glued the edges, uh, put the edge down on the glued area, and then I pulled the fabric tight, just like when we covered anything. Um, I just have the corners a little different this time, so I want to share corners with you. So for the corners, what we're going to do first is we're just going to glue down in the middle. We're going to glue all the middles of all four sides down. Don't go all the way to the corner just yet. Now for the corners, it's relatively easy. What we're going to do is we're going to put one corner folded down against the adjoining corner. And then we're just going to take the fabric from that adjoining corner and fold it up just so that the fold matches the corner. And I know that, that sounds silly, but I think you could see what I'm doing. Okay, so that's how it looks all done. Let's do it again to another one. But this time really slowly and really closely. Okay, and carefully, of course. I wanted to show you this one with the snowflake actually on the corner so that you guys can get a really good look at... Um, how it looks so basically you want to tuck one piece of fabric under while you're folding a piece of fabric over and lining that fold up square with the corner and then once you have it down on the table then you can go ahead and glue down all the corners and the edges 
Um, you can glue under and all the things and really do be careful. Just about here is where I burnt myself. Um, and I still have the blister. It's pretty, it's pretty. It hurts nice. Um, anyway, <laughs> I know I have like finger protectors too and I just didn't use them. I will be using them from now on. Um, okay, so now after all of this, be careful again. Um, glue down all your edges. Um, lower your hot glue gun. But this part is relatively easy and safe. Um, you just want to put a little hot glue. You could trim it, obviously, if you want to. But like I said, the real reason I wanted to use this fabric is because that star um, really does uh, emulate the, not star, the snowflake really does emulate the snowflakes around the mailbox. Now this mailbox was from last season, so you may not be able to find this one, but they do have cuter ones out this year, which of course I couldn't find figures um, so we have this one with the penguins and the polar bears which I really like so now to find center I know we've done this on our channel before too we're going to measure from corner to corner and find the midway point and just give it a tiny mark you don't have to use a sharpie I just use a sharpie because it shows up better on camera and we're going to do the same thing diagonal from corner to corner find where the two marks intersect and that's where your middle is now this time I usually go in with a screwdriver to get these things started, but now I'm going directly to the scissor. I want to cut a slit. Well, actually, I'm going to use the, the box cutter, the really, really sharp box cutter first. And I'm going to add a slit to the fabric and then a couple of grooves in the um, chipboard just to get it going. Then I start with my scissor. And now I'm just going to keep checking it for um, measurements, basically. I just want to make sure that I um, am getting the hole big enough. I don't want the hole so much bigger than the tube. Um, I really want it to be a nice tight fit because the only thing that's going to hold that tube down is the glue. Now I could make the pole shorter and push the tube down further. You could use a plunger dowel. You could really do a lot of different things but I had this and this is what I wanted to use and I saved it for this because it reminded me of a candy cane at Barbara's pole and that's why. <laughs> So I'm just going to keep slowly making the hole bigger and then twisting and twisting um, until I get that perfect, just perfect fit, okay? And after you get that perfect fit, you want to go ahead and insert it down about a half an inch. Um, I've taken the scissor and trimmed a little bit of the pieces that are remaining. And then we're going to add hot glue, but we're going to do it later. We want to make sure that the rest of it gets going in case we have to accidentally pull out that dowel. Um, so for the next portion, we have to find the middle of the mailbox. Now, this isn't like the sturdiest setup. I have seen these for upwards of like 10 or $15. This one's going to cost us three fifty or $4 at the most if you bought all these materials new. Um, but the fact that it's homemade kind of gives a little bit extra something. Plus the ones that I saw for like $10 were a smaller mailbox. So I feel like this is a nice big size, would really hold any of the Santa's Christmas letters, I'm just saying, um, or whatever you feel like you want to put in it, okay? So um, I want to use the ground stake to hold the mailbox onto the pipe. We've done something similar before on our channel when we made our original two-tiered country tray. Um, yeah, that was a while ago. Um, <laughs> I just realized that was one of my first videos. Um, so what I'm doing is I found center. I'm going to take the, um, the utility knife and I'm going to make an X. The stake that goes in the ground, it has sort of an X built into it. What I did do that you saw before, and I'm sorry I was talking over it, um, was I cut down, I broke off little pieces of the, um, basically the stem that would normally hold the light. We don't need that to be on there anymore, but we do want that bottom round ring to stay. You could leave it and just be mindful of when you put letters in there. And if you're never intending on using this for letters, you don't have to, you can just leave it all day. Um, but once you have that cut down and then you can go ahead and fit it into your mailbox, then you want to go ahead and add some glue. Um, you want to add some glue to the mailbox where the post is and you want to add some glue to the base where the post is as well. So if you can see here, I'm kind of like shooting glue in all those four sections and really giving it a good 
dollop of glue on the top and then I'm going to go ahead and put the um, holder back in the pole. Now remember that pole has a hole in the bottom so you want to be careful about turning it with all that glue back down towards your table. That's why I'm leaving it upright just to let the glue really settle down that pole and really hold onto it really well. You also want to make sure that your stand is even with your um, mailbox at the time. Unless you want it on an angle, you can absolutely do that. That's 100% designer choice. <laughs> Now, one thing I thought that I needed to do was to cover that little peg. Now, I'm not covering that peg for aesthetics. I'm covering that peg to give it more support. So if you put a piece of even thin cardboard glued down over the peg onto the mailbox, you're going to give that added protection of um, if something heavy was on the mailbox, it wouldn't push down and maybe possibly break that ring. Um, but, you know... This is just, like I said, this is just my tip. So you can see I just used a red piece of cardboard from the, um, the over the door hanger and it matched perfectly. I put a ton of hot glue down on it and then glued it to um, all four sides. And that's it. It's so cute. I know it was so easy. I love it. I hope you guys do too. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share with friends and family, anybody who might be interested in making one of these Santa mailboxes. And hopefully you guys really enjoyed this um, week. The playlist for all of the videos are in the description box down below in case you missed any. Um, and as always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!